Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today we're going to see if we can't get a 1966 Chevrolet four-wheel drive running. It's only been sitting for 13, 14 years. Shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, it is. Guess what, I brought Duffy along with to help. He's been doing a real good job. Already scared one raccoon out of it. So there's surely only two or three more in there. We got Mobile Mortski with. I'm sure I brought absolutely everything we're gonna need. We had to plow through a slough to get out here. Also, I don't know if you can see this. We're out in BFE. You're gonna have to look up just what that stands for on the Google box, but it pretty much means that it's not the edge of the world, but you can, you can see it. It's it's right over there. We're out here. And the state bird is terrible. I made a list of things to bring. Bug spray is not on the list next time. Anyway, the pickup. It's a 1966 Chevrolet three-quarter ton. I don't know if they called it a K20, but she's a 20 series. It's four-wheel drive. This is a good rig. My acquaintance Ben and I were at a local watering hole. I asked him about this rig that he had in high school, and he said, I should own it. So now I do. We got to get it out of here. And we're going to see if we can't get it running first, because why not just hook onto it and drag it home? Let's, let's, let's have some fun out here swatting skeeters. Duff loves it. Absolutely. Where's the birds? Where's the birds? But yeah. Let's take a look. She's got the Pioneer plates on it. You don't need the uh, date code tag on They're good forever. The only thing you can't do is make money. So you can't put them on your grain truck or your snow blowing machine. Oh, Ben, he's lazy. He only put one of the bolts in. I think it was a spray rig at one time. So it had like a tow bar on the front. Speaking of spray rigs. There's a Spraw Coupe right there. That's French for, I'm gonna spray your 16 acres of wheat, so you better lock up your wife, because once I'm done, she's gonna want some of this. If you guys wanna see us do some wheelies in one of those, comment down below. And while you're commenting down below, I know you're gonna like this video anyway, so just get over here, see that? Hit the thumbs up, just click it. No, you didn't hit it. Click the button, like. All right, there you go. So here we go, back to the 66. I'm pretty sure it's got a whiskey dent in every corner. That Bondo's real good. I brought an air tank, but I don't think it's gonna do any good. I did bring some ether though, but I think we're gonna need a jack. These are the big wide fatties. What are these? What size are they? They're big dogs. They're 12, 16, fives can't get those anymore I'm guessing if you do you can't afford them the typical door stops broke I don't know why that would crack out like that it's got a toolbox CB antenna West Coaster tow mirrors also off the bead fiberglass bed liner Ooh, that was worth it right there and a chain we got a way to get it out of here Cooling jugs, tire iron, K&N air filter. We just got to bang that out. We're good to go, right, Duff? What is in the toolbox? Meow. Here, what is, how does this work? Come on. Uh, we got some uh, grease gun parts. Ooh, new spare dimmer switch. Portal wire, speaker wire. Yeah. If we get it running, I'm going to wear that. Look at these good tools. Mac? Wow, Ben is rich. This brush ain't even a burden used to brush the teeth. Scraper, let me guess, snap on money bags. Sure enough, snap on SP2224. Probably never been used. 1994 Twins Cup. 
I'm pretty sure they didn't win the World Series that year. Well, there's all kinds of good people over there. Ooh, that's a... Not only is it rare because it's a 9 16th, but it's an international. Did you know that International Harvester made tools? They were made in the US of A. Half inch breaker bar and extension. Yeah, that's cool. Pizza Hut. I ain't been to those in a while. Ooh. New blade, come on. Uh, yeah, it's pretty sharp yet. Yeah. Might need some of that stuff. What else? It's got the tailgate. Nobody made a bench out of that yet. Thank goodness. Toe bumper. Look at these chrome tips. That one's that one's got a little whanger to it. That one's pretty straight and rusty. Drop hitch. Allegedly, this thing was pretty loud back in the day. I don't really remember anything from back then. Uh, judging by the size of this bush, it's been here a while. That tire might take air. Ooh, chrome valve stem cap. School bus seat, flashlight. Was that a letterman's jacket? Gosh dang. Sergeant Central football number 22. Drew, is that you? Nope, it was Ben. You're gonna probably want this, Ben. I don't know if you fit in it anymore. But here it is. Sell it back to you. That's some big poops. I don't know what kind of critter leaves those, but hopefully it's not in here. Oh yeah. It's got a tack on the dash for all the RPMs. Keys are in it. That's a plus. It's not rusty, I'm guessing, judging by that plate there. Or that plate there. Or that plate there, just stacking plates. Is that what the tuner guys talk about when you stack them? That tire might be on the bead too. What is on the hood? Oh no. <laughs> I'm in danger. That is a lot of very, very big poop. And that's, I'm guessing, where the radiator was. Unless Ben was using a screen door for a radiator. I'm guessing that was his bug shield. Don't worry, whoever took the radiator left us the bracket. Look, it's been welded, just like the one on my other pickup. Check out that video for how I did that. Those are some big poops. Like, why? Why would you want to poop down the intake? <sighs> so it's got HEI, and uh, they stole the hose clamps. They're probably down there, also in poop. Battery's gone. Son of a biscuit. You think it'll suck that poop right through there? I think it's a 327... With, yeah, it's a 327. It's got the factory doubled up alternator brackets. Those are good. Mickey Thompson valve covers, also real good. I don't know what this bracket was for. Oh my goodness. Well, should we see if we can get it to turn over? Take her out of gear? What do you think, Duff? What's this? Maintenance meter. Yeah, well, you didn't do any on this thing, Ben. Is that button to start it? Oh, so many switches. Yeah, it's got a super tack, real good. A couple of pheasants. Look at those factory four wheel drive decals. She's a four banger. Out of gear. What are the odds it turns over? Oh, after they overstrung that door a couple times, we built a new door strap. So many plates, at least they screwed them in on this side. It's weird, the floors are shut, but the rockers and cab corners really ain't so bad. Just a lot of dents. You're all done hunting? Thanks for getting that coon out of here that was pooping and everything. Well, let's see if we're even wasting our time. Oh boy. No. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. She's stuck. Duh. Gosh dang it. Small block Chevy should be so easy to get running. See how over full the dipstick is with water. It's only about a quart and a half over. So that's not a ton of water. Just the one cylinder that it's full. Well, I guess let's put a bar on the crank and see if we can snap that bolt off. Or something. Uh, I think it's a five ace. There's a bolt in there. There's not. Great. Great, great, great. What are we gonna do now, Duffers? I didn't bring a bar with, I don't think. This 
Speaking of bars, we should just go to the bar. I really wish somebody had stuffed a rag in that carburetor when they stole it. That would have been nice of them. Thieves these days just have no respect. I was thinking, I'm not as strong as I once was, so let's just hook a battery up to it and turn it over that way. Except for that terminal snapped off. But we'll, get a, we'll get a locking pliers for that. And that one's not long enough, but we'll just bend that out of the way because that battery goes down is too good for what we got going. Oh yeah, just lay it on the side. There we go. Tighten this positive first so that way when I clamp on that negative, it really arcs out. We know that this battery's oh it is even on the right. Oh yeah, that would be some metric garbage. I like when the cables are the same color as opposed to being the wrong color. You know, this way you second guess yourself where if the positive would have been black and the negative would have been red. I'd have hooked it up backwards for sure. Let's go hit some of them buttons inside and see what happens. Let's try the key-ish first. And nothing. And nothing there. How about this one? Nothing. Turn all them on. Nothing. Well, those are MSD wires. Hey, there's the fuel line. Oh, they cut that off, though. At least they left the studs in the gasket. Just what I want to do is crawl under there. Oh, look. And there's the, there's the seal to hold that radiator hole down in. Last thing I want to do is climb under there hook up those wires to find out that this thing truly in fact does not turn over well look at this if we just pull this wire out of there we should be good to go that's hooked right up to the starter and it's clearly not original so i don't feel bad about cutting it at all kind of like these ones what do you say duff i think these are supposed to be purple so let's work on that bin snippity snip i like how i didn't suck the Zip ties up tight, you know, that means he's a professional. Just leave everything kind of loose there. Leave the tails on it. You know, they don't cut you that way. I wonder, oh, that throttle cable inside was hooked up to this here heater hose, you know, to turn the heat off inside. That's brilliant. He was a fan of just the loose floppy zip ties. What a guy. I hope he never grew up. Here goes nothing. I took my handy dandy. Napa stripper. The only good thing that place ever made, other than the Wix filters that they steal, anything with Napa and wiring is bad except for that thing. Let's see what happens. What? Come on, you know you want to. Oh man. I thought we were giving up on this. I thought we were over two after the flatheads. Overhead valve things, come on. Suck those turds right through, small block. Be strong, little starter. Ugh. I suppose we could pull the spark plug wires off and pull the plugs out. At least we only got about uh, an hour and a potato of minutes left before the mosquitoes kill us all. Let's pull some plugs. Well, the My First Tool Kit had a 5A spark plug socket even. Let's hope these are 5As. And they're 1316s. Maybe not. Get on there. Come on. What the French? Ah, uh, so these are 1316s plugs. I don't think I have a 1316s wrench and or socket in the entire pickup. That sucks. You ready to go to the bar? Come back another day? Good news is it kind of turns over. So maybe, maybe there is a chance. Wonder if I should just try to get all the poopy out of the intake that I can or take the intake off? Or do I just throw an Edelbrock on it and let her eat? I mean, that diet should be good in fiber. It's gonna love it. It's not like I'm gonna hurt that engine because it's, it's clearly real good. She's a race car engine, I'm sure. What are all these wires? Probably for the electric fan that this thing's never had. 
horn. Who knows? Chassis lights? Could be. Why are you breathing so hard? Yeah, I need a drink too. Well, to be continued. So the good news is it's majestic AF out here. We got roosters cackling off to the side. Mosquitoes are terrible. Sun's going down. And that thing's got a tow hook on the front. And I brought a strap. There's no hook on the Ford, so I just went around that nine inch diff because those things are bulletproof. Just ask a Ford guy. I don't know that you can pull a Chevy out with a Ford, but we're going to give it a whirl. The other thing is, I've never tested four wheel drive in the old pumpkin patch. Mobile Mortsky is going to give her a whirl today. Let's see what happens. You just stay back, Duff. You follow me. So last time you saw this thing, it was out in the field about a year ago, and it was full of raccoon poop in the intake. I'm guessing that hasn't resolved itself, and we haven't done anything with it in a year, so I figured we better get this thing going. So let's take a look at it. Like I said, really, the only thing we did with this thing was we put the skinny 17.5s on there, only because they held air, and because I really like the looks of tall skinnies, and fill the back end with junk. Most of that junk is the big fat wide tires. Oh, we got some 19 inch 3031 Model A wheels. Are those 21s? I don't remember. 2829s, 21 inch, 3031s, 19 inch. Your useless knowledge of the day. What else is back here? Ooh, D100 Mopar wheel. Another Mopar wheel. Rock? That might have been in here before. Let's get after it. See if we can get that hood open. Yeah, that's a lot of poop. If I pull that intake off and throw that poop on the ground, will you roll in it? Of course you will. The poop's still there. Oh, and I forgot that it had dual flexi hoses. That one's even newish. Exciting. Well, I think we're just gonna pull the intake just to make life easier. I think we had a turning over that day. I don't really remember. You guys just watched it. It was a year ago for me. Red Racing plug wires. Dang. Oh man. I tied these wires up. They were just kind of hanging down there. We didn't know what they fit. Set up the tripod. Start cleaning up that mess. Oh, we should have just blown all that off outside. Does raccoon poop have the hentavirus? Silly trash pandas using it like a toilet Ugh. oh man it's all the way over here before I start eating petrified rat turds I'm gonna eat my supper I know I'm not gonna have this Vienna sausage or spam that Terry sent me down in Iowa if you haven't go check out Puddin's video he got some of the same stuff and he's pretty creative in what he did with it I think I'm going to try Spam off screen. It's probably pretty good. I don't know about these though. Plus they're barbecue. Ugh, I don't know. Comment down below with your favorite Spam recipe. Or if I should just throw it right in the trash. I guess the Spam grilled cheese is pretty good. I mean, I like grilled cheese. We'll give it a whirl. Not today though. We got brats. Duff loves brats. So I was just going to vacuum these trash panda turds right up, but... I don't think my poor little shop vac is gonna like these. They're pretty girthy. So we're just gonna grab them by hand. I got my Harbor Freight rubbers here because you know, when it's your life that's in danger, 
with jack stands or rubbers, I always go with the cheapest one that you can get. Arbor Freight. Oh, that's a lot of poopy. Man, this thing ate a lot of corn duff and peanuts. The good news is it's petrified, so it, it doesn't really smell. And it's dried up. Kind of like that Joe Walsh song. Pick up the dog, do hope that it's hard. Did I blow a hole through my rubber yet? Thank goodness. You never want to blow out your rubber. Friends got a Chrysler, I got a Dodge. I honestly just thought about throwing a carburetor in there and letting it suck it all through. That probably wouldn't be real good. The poo is all stuck together. It's one poo. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? Dude, if you get the nachos stuck together, that's one nacho. Yep, we plugged her up. That thing was taking turds like a toilet at the Chipotle. She's plugged now, so I think we got it good enough. Now I think we'll get this well, silly flexi hose off and the heater hose. Maybe get the throttle linkage out of the way. Slide that distributor out that was clearly way off. He's got the vacuum advance smashed against the firewall. Gotta take our doubled up alternator bracketry off there. So yeah, shouldn't take much to get that intake off. See if it clears these stupid Mickey Thompson valve covers. Oh yeah. Sure glad this isn't a 390 Ford intake or Ford FEs in general. Those things will blow your backside out. Come on, baby. Oh yeah, I didn't drop too much crud in there. Well, before we get too crazy, I'm going to hit it with a vacuum some more after I unplug that. Looks really clean inside, but like I said, I knew we had this engine apart, at least to put heads in. I don't know if they touched the bottom end. I don't think so. I think the valve covers just really leaked a lot, which is weird because they're aluminum. So, hit it with a vacuum cleaner and pull those intake gaskets off. Clean that intake out. And... Yeah, we're ready to slam her back together. So now I'm going to scrape the gaskets off. But I tell you what, these super scrapers, they are the cat's meow. This is not a paid promotion. I am, however, a dealer for these things. So, if you want to get your hands on some of these scrapers, and they're freaking life-changing, give me a shout out. Email is listed down in the description below. I'll try to remember to put the prices in there for what they are. They'll be shipped. These things are made in Iowa, so they're made in the USA, and I don't know. I thought, how can a scraper be any different than the other ones? These got some type of magical carbide tip on them that cuts through everything like a hot knife through butter. They got, I believe it's a one inch, and then these are half inch, something like that, but haven't even got to use these yet. Pretty excited about them. There it is, right there, made in the USA. Uh, this little short guy is going to be real handy. This thing has pretty much done everything I've needed to do. So hit me up if you want to get one of these. Like I said, pricing will be listed down below. PayPal, you can snail mail a check, whatever. But these things are freaking good. And every time I use them, I'm going to shout them out because best money you'll ever spend is on these things. Whether you use it once a year or once a day, these things are good. I'm sure there will be guys commenting down below that they got them, how awesome they are. Anyway, rant over. Getting the super scraping. It makes it a pleasure to do. I'm gonna try that new one out. This little guy. So as I was always told this thing had a 327 in it. 
wondering if it was the right one for this 66. So I looked up the stamping number on nastyz28.com. Be careful how you enter that in when you search it. And this has got CEO is what I thought, because usually you just need those first three letters or the three letters. And this says, and nothing came up. There was a bunch of CEF, CEM. So I was like, CE was a over-the-block warranty or replacement engine that GM offered. So this has got a replacement engine in it. We can look at the back and see what's on the back of the engine. But I'm guessing since this has got a road draft tube, it's either a 283 or 327. You can almost guarantee it's a 327. I'm not sure I'm going to go back and look at that block castle number. But anyway, this is an over-the-counter replacement block. It's not the factory one for this pickup. I'm not surprised. It's had a pretty rough life. But it is a factory GM engine. It's kind of neat. It's been bored out. Anywho, back to scraping gaskets. Let's blow the poopy out first. You catch it with your mouth. Oh yeah, and these things are lifetime warranty. If you screw up that carbide tip, you send it in. And they fix it. They give you a new one. I don't know. But I've had this for going on five years. Haven't damaged it yet. Okay, put some silicone on the china walls because you don't use those end gaskets because they just blow out on you. I like using right stuff because it's the good stuff. There's a reason it's 20 bucks a bottle or whatever it is and everything else is six, seven bucks. Right stuff on the china walls, Felpro gaskets on the end. Maybe these don't even come with china wall gaskets. I bet they do because they get sick of people complaining if they don't come with them. Oh yeah, restrictor plates, we just throw those away. Distributor gasket, you're going to want that though. These things though, they go right in the trash with scotch clips, Krager wheels, the scotch lock of the gasket family. And those restrictor plates, yeah, keep that on the DL, it's not exactly street legal. Wow, <laughs> that's really loud. Yeah, thanks. Took the restrictor plate off, give the Red Dragon a little more juice. But uh, let's keep that on the down low. It's not exactly street legal. I don't know if you've ever done these before, but it says this side up, so I always put that side up. I like to slide these in first and then put my silicone on the china walls. I'll show you that in a second. And we'll just drop our intake on. Bada bing, bada boom, easy peasy, a lemon squeezy. Here we go. Before we do all that, we're going to take these fancy blue rags. Dad would never let me have these when I was a kid. We grew up poor. And we're going to spray some brake cleaner on there and wipe everything down. Let's be honest though, t-shirts really are the best rags. Old t-shirts, not new ones. Blue shop rags to my old man were like the towels in the bathroom that your mom wouldn't let you touch. They weren't even for the guests, they were just for display apparently but let's be honest we all use those things all the time and just put them back the way they were so she would never know permatex right stuff one minute yep wish i could last that long why do they call these china walls because they keep the mongorians out i don't know All right, bring out all the haters who say that you got to use gaskets on the china wall. And then the other 85% of you will stand up for me and say, no, use silicone. Because that's what I appreciate about you guys. You stand up for me. And you tell me when I'm wrong, which, you know, doesn't happen very often. Just kidding. If it wasn't for the wrong way, there'd be no way. It's side up. Just like so. The way I like to do it is we'll set the intake on there. You can dab a little bit on the gasket. Like so to hold it in place. Doesn't hurt. Slide that baby on there. Try to drop it on as straight as you can without moving it around too much. What I like to do is put way too much goop on the china walls and then I let it set up. 
overnight or whatever. And then I'll go in there with a razor blade and trim off the excess. You don't want to wipe it off right away because that just makes a mess. And you don't want to leave it because that just looks terrible. And you don't want to put too little silicone because then you're in for trouble. So, whatever. Everybody does it different. That's how I like to do it. So then you don't see the mess, but usually I forget and it never happens. Or I get lazy. Or in a hurry because... We gotta get these things cranked out, cause we're probably gonna lose the shop. Why, what is it with this thing? Ready rod, that's always a good idea. Farmer things. Why didn't we scrape that carb gasket when we had it off? Cause we love crawling up and down this four wheel drive engine bay probably. I think you're supposed to torque these like 35 foot pounds. Probably not. Torque sequence, I guess you just start in the middle and go in circles. Click! So since that cap was rotated too far to the right, so that the vacuum advance was smashed all the way up against the firewall, we're going to go ahead and turn it to the left. Maybe. If we can figure out which way it's pointing. That was like this. This was like that. Yeah. So we're going to take our screwdriver. Try to find the slot. Now. Hopefully that'll get us pretty close. Oh, should we put our new gasket on there? Nah, that one looks good enough. We'll save that one for a better project. Bada bing, bada boom. Drop in. Oh man, he's got the hold down clamp on upside down even. Rookies. Why didn't we notice that when it was easier to take off? So you can see this distributor hold down clamp. See it's got a little bow to it. It's pointed up. It should be pointed down. Your tech tip of the moment. Brought to you by Mortsky. The Mortsky moment of tech. Everybody got mad when I said tech tip of the day because there's too many of them, so there's 13 tech tips, so... Snug this up just enough so we can still turn the distributor, but it's not going to jump out. Our fancy distributor wrench. That should be good. Scratch the corrosion off of our contacts on our HEI cap. So we just got done cleaning up contacts, electrodes, whatever you want to call it, on our HEI distributor cap. We should put a new one on, but we're not going to. So you see here, you got two clips, tack, bat. Well, this bat, you want 12 volt power going to this. So usually on a points ignition vehicle like this, there's a ballast resistor in line somewhere in there. So there's only going to be like nine-ish volts coming to the coil. So you want to make sure that you run a new wire. Usually there's a spade terminal that's right on the fuse panel, fuse relay center, whatever you want to call it. And then you run that spade terminal, run a red wire, whatever color wire you want, purple, green, blue, lavender, orange, to this terminal that says bat for battery. You want to make sure you're getting 12 volts there if you ever convert one of these to HEI from points. The other side says tack, pretty self-explanatory. Run that wire up to your tachometer. Then these three clips right here are from your base here distributor for your pickup and your HEI module. But you always want to make sure you don't just put a regular spade clip on here. Because see how you've got these hooks here? You want the factory style clip that hooks over that. Ben's just got a regular spade clip on there, so this rough riding son of a buck. We're gonna hit a hard bump and that thing's gonna slide off. We're gonna be sitting dead in the water. So go to Speedway Motors or Jags. pretty much all the big name companies sell a new end that goes on here that you just crimp that spade on there, slide that new plastic clip over, and you're good to go. I'm not going to do that right away because I want to make sure that's got 12 volts before I cut that wire off and waste a perfectly good new clip. There you go, more useless knowledge for you. Always make sure you use the right clip on here, otherwise you're going to be sitting there, whether it's your mud truck or your derby car 
or your race car or the car that you got on the street. You know, you don't want to be going to Sonic in Aunt Edna or whatever Puddin calls that thing, getting to your foot long chili cheese dog. You'll be sitting there at a stoplight looking like a fool. Don't be a wank. Put the right clip on there. Rant over. There should be a clip on either side of this wire too, but there's not. It can only go one way because it's got this little niche over on that side of that connector. We're not going to worry about that. One clip's good enough. So which wire did Ben have going here? White one? I'm guessing that. Got two wires coming off of it. Yeah, that must have been for the battery. We'll fix that later. Somebody remind me to put that right clip on there. Green, that must be from the tack. Guess if we don't have spark, we'll swap those two around. So you always should have your number one cylinder on a GM 1357-2468. Your number one terminal should be pointed right at number one. Do it the right way. I don't know what they got going on in that throttle rod, but I think we're going to leave that off for now. I don't think that washer is supposed to be there. Got ourselves a brand used carburetor gasket. Does it fit? Does it fit? What the heck? Inside bolts. Is that going to seal? This thing really just needs a quarter jet, let's be honest. Come on, help me help you. Looks like it's going to seal. One of our subs, Mike Hardwood, he's a Ford guy. That's too bad. Just kidding, you know we like them all here. Dodges, Fords, Plymouths, Chevys, Studebakers. Yeah, maybe not Studebakers. Peter built. Anyway, he went to a Holly on his Ford and was so gracious to send me this 1406, which is, I believe, a 600 CFM with electric choke. So we're going to go ahead and plug a couple of these vacuum ports and this power brake port. And then we'll have to rig up fuel line. Should be good to go. So thanks, Mike. You can put your name right on the carbonator so I'd know who it was. Let's throw that hardware somewhere we're going to lose it. Not down the intake. Always leave a dab of your right stuff hanging out. That way that dries up, seals up the stuff inside. I don't know. Makes me feel good. And you got a tail to grab on and pull it out. Got some new hose for our vacuum advance. We're gonna hook it up to manifold vacuum over on this side. We need a little extra length on it, so if we gotta adjust our timing, we can. We can always trim it up later if we need to. So in cycling the throttle blades, I don't think the secondaries are opening. I think they're mechanical on these. I'm not a carbonator guy. Anywho, we're gonna pop it off. I feel like I got the wrong gasket on there. And we like doing things twice. So tech tip, make sure you check your gasket that it matches the bottom of your carburetor, not just your intake. Well, what allows these to open? It's not the gasket. Are you kidding me? It won't open because of the choke? For dumb. So if the choke's on, it won't open your secondaries, but if you put the choke off, secondaries open. You guys probably knew that though. Oh great, I lost the Jesus clip. Awesome. Well, where did that go? Oh, for cheese and rice. Ok, 
Gone forever, Aaron Hernandez. Gone forever, Aaron Hernandez. Don't let me forget to put a return spring on that throttle either. I always use vacuum hose on vacuum lines. Don't use fuel hose or it'll collapse. Well, our old Jesus clip never showed its face, so found a new one. So after I shut you guys down last night, diddled around a little bit more, got our temp gauge done, throttle return spring, throttle's done, got our fuel line up there. I don't really like these plastic filters, but at least I can see what's going on. I did look inside the tank, and it's Rust City, so we unhooked that. We'll just run her off a nurse tank. Still got to hook up this heater shut off. Drop the radiator in. I did find this radiator mount rubber in the line on the intake. And I don't have a second one, so I took a chunk of 3 ace fuel hose. I think that'll work good enough. We don't have the bracket that bolts on up here, like I had to extend out in my other video when I put an aluminum one in Rex, my green two-wheel drive 66. So, we'll have to figure out something there. I'm thinking just some mechanics wire. Probably going from those two holes down there, up to here, maybe put some bolts in there to hook it around. Call it good. Yeah, slide that in, hook up our green stripe flexi hoses. That's right, flexi hoses are so good. You know, they come with racing stripes right on them. So, other than that, probably gotta do a little bit of wiring, hook up fuel tank. Check our fluids. I think we'll be ready to test this thing out. Throw a battery in it, obviously. Here we go. starter down so we got to rebuild that too Whew. The wires getting hot somebody's screaming put some oil on them cylinders it's fine my fingers getting hot time for the loser switch Oh, you can hear it chirp. She's tight. <laughs> Something's burning. I'm sure it's not that starter. spray some lube in there. I don't know how we're gonna. I'm not a WD-40 guy, but oh, that's why, because our cans don't even work. Oh, I suppose that starter cooled down. Smell that bad. All right. See how these are the old style plugs. 
with the crush washer on them or whatever, RJ12 YC champions, and they got the 1316 hex. These are for points, but I think you can gap them for HEI. So I think it's 35 for points and then a wider gap, 45 for HEI. I'm going to do a little double checking. Then I'm going to check these gaps because they seem awful tight. We're just going to leave them at 35. Rock Auto says 35 heavy duty, 45 light duty for different plugs and whatnot. So I probably don't know what I'm talking about. We're just going to whammy these in there. Consider this thing heavy duty. Obviously it ran before at 35 thou gap, so it should be good. Oh, this thing's going to stink so bad when that exhaust warms up. All right, well, took some fuel to it, see if it pops off. Now, which crap box... Did we leave the boat tank in last? Ah, don't forget, get your Morsky decals. New ones got Duff and White Lightning on them. You get a four pack of the four inch ones for 10 bucks. And then we usually throw in a couple of these little two inch ones in there too. Four styles, we got the blue hot rod, White Lightning here, 71 Chevy C10, and Chins 81 Chevy. So send me an email, we can do PayPal, or you can snail mail a check. Keys on. It's sparking, so I'm guessing we got power somewhere. So we're gonna give it a little hot sauce. See what happens. I'm guessing it's gonna take a while to get fuel up here, but see if she pops off. We know the timing's probably gonna need some adjusting. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. <laughs> Too far advanced. So if it turns this way, we gotta turn it back. This way. Now let's see what happens. We're out of battery too. More? Alright. Time for a new battery. Take that back, we do need a battery sponsor. I want now. Like that? There you go. Not really. Let's check for a spark. Sure, we got it. Oh, yeah, we got spark. Why are you not running? Somebody commented on another video today. You ever use starting fluid? I really don't. I mean, I do, but not in the videos. So, let's see what happens. Why are we not getting fuel? There we go. Now we're getting some fuel up there. Up to 11. We got spark. Fuel pumps pumping fuel. The timing, I don't know, seems close. She's gonna go. We just need some battery power. Thanks, Nancy, and 
Lee Belt Homes for the batteries. I don't know where they're at. I think one is in an orange truck. I don't know where the other one's at. We're gonna have to hunt up some batteries one of these days. Or hunt up a couple new ones. All right, here we go, baby. Let's do it this time. <laughs> Too much advance yet? That's a good start. Guessing the plugs are all wet now, so that's awesome. You know what drives spark plugs out? Ether bunnies. Little Cosby sauce. I can smell that starter, it's not happy. Why are you not starting then? <laughs> That's oh, a knee slapper. Plugs are right. Choke, maybe? She's as loud as I remember. We gotta turn that idle up. I don't like that fan. Somebody warned me about one of those flying apart. Now I'm worried about it. Off. There was a whole bird's nest in there. Complete with eggs. How do you like them? Scrambled? Over easy. 
hard boiled, deviled. Yeah, I'm a over easy guy too. That's a lot of stuff up inside that exhaust pipe. No brakes. We don't need brakes. We'll throw fluid in there though, just to make us feel better. Oh, that's a lot of mud. Brake mud is not good. She's got a little blow by, too duff. Just a bit. We're just putting straight water in here because I know this radiator was no good when I took it out of Rex. And we're going to take it off and put some real radiator hoses on here sometime. And a real fuel line. And probably fix a few other things that we find on this test drive. What's the worst that could go wrong? Need some wiring attention too. Maybe a fan shroud? An air cleaner? Wait, was the air cleaner in the back? How do we get the starter wire in the cab? Oh, that's the blue wire we cut off. So we just gotta splice that blue wire back together and it should crank over. Right? Maybe? We should probably bring this with. Just in case. We gotta get going. It's almost dark out. If we don't let this thing run tonight and drive, you guessed it. We're gonna lose the shop. So now if I turn it over in there, is it gonna turn over? Push the push button, I mean. There is just switches galore in there. I don't know what any of them do, but two of them kill power to the ignition. So whatever, we got options. Some anti-theft stuff, I suppose. You get a drink before we go. So let's crimp that wire together. I don't know what we're gonna do with these. Put them on this nut and hope they don't come out. Sure. Here goes nothing. Override. Duff seems enthusiastic. Flip all three of these switches on. Push this one here. Pressure's pegged. Temp is too. So that can't be right. Oh man. First gear is a creeper gear. You all the creeper. See, it needs some bolts. Yeah, you're definitely going to be that guy in the neighborhood of this thing. Don't forget that radiator is literally just held in by friction and a flexi hose. That back tire is flat and it still rides rougher than a cob. What are some of the terms you guys use for rough ride? Rougher than a cob, lumber wagon, buckboard, stiffer than a brick. I don't know. Somebody said a stuck engine, they called it bricked. I like that one. That war wagon, she was brick. I wish we could make a bolt bar run. Ooh, at least second or synchronized, so we can use that to slow down. Because the brakes ain't quite getting there yet. This thing must have like 456s, because two grand. Fourth gear. I don't think we're doing 30 mile an hour. Oh, the yeah. The raccoon poop 
poopy on the engine. A real steamer. It actually steers okay. That is not good. It smells like burnt spam. That's the smell of desire, my lady. God, no, it smells like like a used diaper filled with Indian food. Oh! God dang, that stinks! Keep your head out the window, Duff. Oh yeah, we gotta stop here. There's 35, was that break? No, no, that was... quiet we're not gonna try any donuts in this thing this week because there's a bunch of crap in the back it's getting dark I don't know if this thing's gonna start again or go back in gear so we're just gonna go home I think it would do a donut though Try to put it through the shop wall, even though we might lose the shop anyway. 
it didn't even diesel. Well, you don't want to get out. You like this thing now, huh? Well, the radiator's puking a little bit. She's warmish under here. We definitely needed the extra cooling capacity of the flexi hoses. Oh, what does that gauge say? I forgot we had that one. What's the temp gauge say, Duff? Oh, it's, uh, we don't know, but it's red. So, I mean, whoops. These are the three switches I got over here. I think these two, this one, it won't crank unless you have this one up. Well, that's the crank switch. Maybe. Yeah, she's warm. I don't know. Apparently, you got to have them all flipped up. And these two will kill the ignition. I don't know what's going on there. Myself, I just like a good old ignition switch. I'm not really a push button starter type guy. Theft proof, maybe. So, we gotta find a radiator. Get some new radiator hoses. If somebody wants some flex hose, they'll give you a sweet deal. Air cleaner. Just a good old pressure washing under here. Play with that timing a bit. I notice it's got some blow by. Gotta figure out brakes. I like a fan shroud. Needs new battery cables. These ones are nice and heavy, but the ends suck on them, so we'll just replace them. And then probably a new cap and rotor. And a set of plugs wouldn't hurt either. Fuel pump's working though. Oh yeah, and a fuel tank. Oh man, the list is long. Probably adjust that carburetor a little bit. Yeah, she's got a few things to do. And that's just in there. Plus the ignition switch. I mean, the floors are, they're, they're good. Oh yeah, she should probably get some better mounts for that seat. What else stuff? He's claiming it. I'm guessing we're gonna have to do something with the headlight switch because I think that's probably for the dimmer down there. That tire's low. Probably check the fluids. Mufflers? Yeah, we don't need those. Good thing there wasn't any or they'd be rotted out from that stuff. But yeah. Not too shabby, huh, Duff Meister? Not too bad at all. There you have it. Duff Dog and Morski got a 1966 Chevy K20 back on the road that's been parked for at least 10 years. It's his 15 year class reunion this year, so it's probably closer to 15. Just goes to show a small block Chevy with trash panda crap, plumb level at the top of the carburetor. All you do is pull the intake, new set of gaskets, throw a bad used radiator in there oh yeah we need a radiator to fold down set up too if we ever find the right radiator battery spray a little lube down the cylinders just like you guys tell me to do all the time she's good to go didn't even have to put a starter on this one knock on wood <sighs> yeah they just ain't got their taste back but i'll drink to that we did it we're going to be able to keep the shop for at least another week. So, if you watched it this far, make sure and click that like button. Check out my other videos. Check out the other channels mentioned down below. I usually put a list of the tools that we use down there. If you want to get hooked up with some super scrapers, hit me up with an email. This is in the description. But that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Remember, it doesn't matter you get it done, as long as you're having fun. What do you think, Duff? Is that fun? I think we'll have lots of fun. It's a big blue beast. Hey, it's not for sale, don't ask. We're keeping this one. Sentimental value. Duff really likes it. Don't you, Duff? Don't you? All right, on to the next one. Let's clean this frickin' mess up first. Son of a biscuit.